What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to day 65 of Autodesk Fusion. Today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting an automata again, but we're doing a top-down approach rather than a bottom-up. Now, the top-down approach has a lot of, I would say, very pitfalls where you can easily uh, cause things to be muddled up. You can still get it done, but it can be ugly if you don't do good documentation. The bottom-up design allows you to do things in a very systematic way that you know each part works. And so instead of making one folder with all of my different files that you see right here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new design and everything is going to be in that one spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my folder and so I'm going to rename this one. So let's call this one uh, bottom up and bottom up enter and so let's create a new folder and we'll call this a williams automata we'll call this top down all right so i'm gonna click in here and now anything i do and save will be in this folder so i can click exit out of there and now we're ready to roll so first thing we do is we're gonna create that bottom piece so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna draw a rectangle and that rectangle is going to be four and a half by four inches. I just know those dimensions off the top of my head, kind of what we used for the last one. If you're curious about how I'm rotating so easily, I'm holding down the shift key and the mouse wheel, and that causes this orbital symbol to show up and allows me to rotate pretty freely. So I'm gonna E on my keyboard, we're gonna extrude that 0.25 because it's gonna be a quarter inch. Now, what I'm going to do here is uh, I made a boo-boo already. So I'm going to right click and we're going to edit this feature. And I wanted to make this as a new component, but you see that option is no longer there. Instead, what we have now is a body that is not a component. And you run into problems when you do joints downstreams because you can't join a body that is not a component. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new component. We're going to do from bodies, body selected, click OK. And now we got our bottom piece. Looks good. All right, we're gonna go ahead and make our side piece. So we'll click on new new design, or sorry, new drawing, and we're gonna make okay, do R for rectangle, and this is going to be a four by four square. Click OK, finish sketch. E for extrude, and so we're gonna do negative 0.25. We're going to bring that inwards. Now, here's one big thing that I want to talk about. By default, the operation here is join, and we run into a problem there is because it will create it as an L bracket, and I don't want that to happen. I want it to be a separate component, so we're going to click on New Component, and then click OK. If you forgot to do this and you made it a join, you can right-click and do Edit Feature, and then you would have to make it a new body, and then from there, you'd have to make it a component. So if we just do Component from Step 1, we don't have to worry about any of that. All right, now my side piece right here is uh, the exact same thing on the left side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit M on my keyboard and we're gonna move object or new bodies, click on the body I wanna move. When you do that, this create copy shows up. So we're actually gonna create a copy of that side, bring it on over 4.25 inches and then click OK. And so what it does is it creates a copy of it as a body. So we're gonna take this body now and we're gonna create a new component out of it. And so now I got bottom, side. So if I call this one side as well, there we go. Now you can call those left and right, kind of up to you. All right, let's make our top piece. So we're gonna do our top piece. We're gonna do R for rectangle, click on one corner, click on the other. Click finish sketch. We're gonna extrude all this up a quarter inch. Be careful, remember, we're gonna click on new component. That way it does it a separate piece, it's a new body, and we don't have to worry about that new component operation. I'm gonna call this top. Now, say for example, you accidentally did a join. I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I accidentally did a join, 
how do I fix it, and what does it look like? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new sketch right here, and we're gonna do rectangle, and I'm gonna click on this, it's gonna be a four by four. Click OK, finish sketch. Let's go and extrude this. Uh, let's do, that's gonna be uh, not outwards a quarter inch, that's gonna be inwards a quarter inch. Now I'm gonna accidentally click on join here. So we see my bottom piece is now, is now a part of my back. We don't like that. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna right click, edit feature, and make this as a new body. Now here's where a problem and here's where some, some students might freak out. My back piece is, is now has some automatic things going on with it. You can see they're now connected. And so you create some problems there. Um, and so if it's supposed to be a revolute constraint, you run into some problems. Also on my bottom piece right here, my, uh, let's find this piece right here. We have a body, so let's create a new component from bodies, click on this back piece, and then click OK. Now, wonderful, it will move away, looks great, but it's not over here. It's not originally seen, so if I click on it, it will come highlighted, and you see right on this bottom piece right here, the very bottom of that ribbon becomes a little some dash marks. And so that tells me this piece I'm actively clicking on is nested within here. And so this is where my back piece is going to be. As that, and that's because it came from the bottom. All right, okay. So we're gonna click on revert position, bring everything together, and we're looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and throw in some of our joint constraints, and then we'll call it done for today. So I'm gonna go ahead and move everything out of the way, and we're going to, uh, do some joint constraints. So we're going to continue here. We're not going to worry about uh, capturing this position because it'll kind of muddle up and make this timeline here really long if you keep capturing the position. So what we're going to do here is uh, we are going to, actually we'll take a step back. This piece right here, this bottom piece needs to be grounded. So I'm going to go to my bottom piece, right click, and we're going to ground it. Now, this thing cannot move, will not move, and then um, we know everything else that we build upon that is a stable foundation. So I'm gonna click on J for joint, click continue, and we're going to join the bottom of this with that. It is going to be a rigid constraint. And then we click OK, and we're good to go. So now if I try to move this side wall, it will not move, we're looking good. All right, so let's click on joint, continue. We're gonna join the center of the edge right here with the center of the edge right there. Click okay, we're looking good. Now this other side wall should not be able to move if we've done it correctly, because the bottom is grounded, the right's good, the back and the top, however, we can move it. So typically what I tell my students is, if you think your assembly's done correctly, I'm going to take all of your pieces and try to move them. Don't try to, uh, I would say, be, I would say, um, crafty in thinking you can just have things stacked and they look right. Uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come by and just move all your parts. Okay? And then maybe I'm going to be extra mean. I'll just capture the position too while I'm at it. So why don't you do the joints correctly? So we're going to click on J for joint. We're going to continue. We're going to rotate around. Find the middle of this bottom line and click OK. Now this back piece cannot move. We're looking good. Alrighty. Last one's going to be the top. Now there's a couple different ways you can do it. We're just going to join the center of the top with the center of the back. It's going to be a rigid constraint. Click OK and then we're done. Alright. There we go ladies and gentlemen. We've made our box. We haven't done anything with materials first, so let's go ahead and do that now. 
let's highlight all of it, right click, and let's do physical material. Now this physical material tab will pop up, um, and I'm gonna choose, since this, these boards are gonna be made out of MDF, we're gonna click on wood, we're gonna find MDF, and we're gonna drop it in there. Now I don't like the shading of MDF, it actually doesn't look like MDF, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight everything again, click A for the, on the keyboard, and then I'm gonna do MDF as the as the appearance, as, it, sorry, as the appearance, so. Let's highlight everything. MDF is the appearance. That way it's got the physical properties of MDF and the appearance of the MDF texture that I kind of like better. And then we're gonna go ahead and revert position. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, we've made our automata box and we'll call this done for this video. I'll see you on the next one. We're gonna drill some holes and then we're also going to throw in our crankshaft and handles and we'll call it done there. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you on the next video.